Anyway, thanks for all your kind words on my cover of Thump by Thump and a Slappy. Um, many of you expressed an interest in a tutorial, so I thought I'd go ahead and do that, give you guys that. I think this video will be a lot of fun because um, it's probably one of the few thumping songs you can play from start to finish on a six string. Um, so it makes it kind of like the perfect primer for someone who's interested in getting into thumping but who doesn't want to commit to buying an extended range instrument. Before we dive into the figures, I wanted to give you guys kind of a crash course in thumping so that you kind of know what we're talking about as we go. Okay. Is that better? Bit better. All right. All right. You need to lock out your thumb so that it's accurate and get the phrasing that we want. So the second step is the down thump, as we'll call it. So you want to strike through a particular string at a downward angle of about 30 degrees with the outside corner of your thumbnail. So ideally right at the point where the nail meets flesh. The base of your thumb should impact the next string and sort of use it as a, a target. The third step is the up thump. This is a bit simpler. You just need to hook your nail against the string and pull upwards. Finally, you add index, middle and ring fingers to the pattern consecutively. We use the letters P, P, I, M, A to denote which finger is playing what. If you would like to learn more about thumping in general, I strongly encourage you guys to check out Tosin's comprehensive thump course on guitarmessenger.com, which will be linked below. Um, I have no affiliation with this website or course whatsoever. I just think it's a really sick and affordable learning resource and will serve you way better than this video alone. It's really easy to get lost, but if you slow it down to half tempo and just ingrain the rhythm, it gets a lot easier to speed that up as you progress. Yeah, my other tip is to make sure that you're nailing the six note flurries, so that go A, P, P, I, M, A in this riff that go A, to your thumb, P, P, I, M, A, to make sure that your left hand is muting correctly. So you're getting like a bit of a E or an E flat note off that D string, while not really fretting anything. I actually think Tosin's version is closer to an E, but for me, I, there's something appealing about this E flat often it's a balance between the note that you're fretting or your other fingers which play a part in muffling the note and making the transient really stand out. And also make sure that your left hand is working in a way that lets the thumped low E notes sound through. So yeah. For figure two. So my first tip for figure two is to practice it in two halves. First part. And the second part. Um, and then try to combine those two together. So I would just focus on getting comfortable doing this legato thing over this arpeggio. E minor major seven add nine thingy jazz musicians, fight me in the comments. And this, which is sort of a inversion of that. See, I just ingrained this motion really slowly. 
and then start adding the plucked and thumped elements to it. Like that. A disclaimer, on my cover I did originally, I actually did something mo way more complicated than it needed to be. Um, you'll notice on my transcription here, it's just, it's just PPI on that part. It goes PPI. For some reason, when I tabbed it out the first time, I decided that instead of that I, there was like a, like a hammered harmonic on the 12th here, so I was going which was way harder to connect to the next part. So that's just in case any of you, any of you guys are super eagle-eyed and notice that. Um, but yeah, this way is way easier. So figure three is like, um, Yet another inversion, but this minor major 7 at 9 thingy. So you should really work on getting your fingers out of the way of each other in this part. Um, there's so much happening around just two frets uh, in this riff that it's really important that if you can practice this slow and make sure that you're doing all these small movements of your hand. See, there's quite a lot of sideways motion there that my hand is doing to accommodate my fingers to end up in very close proximity successive targets, right? 7 fret, 8, 8, 7. And also, if you look at my hand position on the back of the neck, it's my thumb is quite low down, and um, you now my fingers are coming straight down, and I'm sort of spreading to try to try get as much coverage as possible without my fingers getting in the way of each other. The other thing is, um, this part is completely palm muted. So you're really looking to get the same like poppy transient quality out of every note. And that sounds kind of simple, right? Just mute all the strings. But I've found that um, some of the strings actually need a bit more pressure or attention. This part. This part is tricky. I've seen other attempts at this part, and what I've noticed is that many people ignore the syncopation and the groove and where the notes are actually landing. So it's very important that you know exactly where the pattern starts and finishes and that you pick accent points that will allow you to correctly loop the pattern at full tempo. Uh, and what I mean by that is that you need to build the awareness that the first note of the bar is here, this plucked note. And then the middle of the bar is not here on the down thump, but actually there on the up thump. So, right, so if you emphasize that note in your head, when you get up to playing at the faster tempos, you'll stay on the tracks. If you don't do that, it's really easy to mistake this down thump here as the middle of the bar, and then that will push the whole pattern out of skew, and you'll find that you're rushing to the end somehow. Um, and I just really encourage you to be very forensic when you practice this. If you have a DAW that you can plug into and watch your playing to like a guide track at tempo, then you can know for sure where it is you're rushing or where you're dragging. Yeah, okay, so we're on figure five. I think the transcription is straightforward here again, um, but this part is slightly deceptive. Try to connect the flurries to this hand movement. So figure six, it, I think, is the most fun thumping riff in this. It's also the easiest, and 
Yeah, if you're really new to thumping, I'd recommend that you actually try this part out first because um, you're going to build strength and confidence and all that good stuff. My first tip is to make sure that you are hitting the correct string when you're thumping. Um, when you learn to thump, you maybe practice for a long time on uh, something a bit simpler, like cognitive contortions, where all the thumping is on the low E string. That's great, but the thing is, um, when you start thumping on the low E string in the beginning, uh, you have a lot of leeway in the, this direction, above the string. And because it's isolated on one side, right? Because this string doesn't have any neighbors above it, right? You have a much bigger margin of error. That being said, when you move to thumping other strings, you have to make sure that you're still preserving the clarity and not you know, bashing into other strings accidentally. I would recommend you check out some other thumping riffs that, you know, take you across all the strings. Like the clean part in physical education. Over time, become as comfortable with essentially picking with your thumb as you are with picking with your pick. And this will take time, but it's so worth it in the end. You can do simple exercises to test this. And also watch out for looping the pattern. Try to make those notes across the bar line consistent. And again, yeah, be forensic, start slow, build m muscle memory. And then over time, as you get more comfortable and the technique's more ingrained, you can increase the speed and start nailing it. So the ending is basically just a, a small amendment to figure one. So instead of adding I and M, we simply just A, P, P, and we end up ending the song on the up thump. And yeah, that's it. I had a lot of fun pretending to be good for you guys. Um, if you enjoyed this and you'd like to see more stuff like this, please feel free to like and subscribe and also to follow my Instagram. Um, please leave suggestions for other things you'd like to see in the comments, maybe other tutorials and stuff. So yeah, sounds good. Mm. Yeah. <laughs>